So today I'm going to be looking at destination signs. I'll look at uh, what an old look and a new look bus have and kind of a little bit of the uh, history behind what a bus service would go through when they were ordering theirs. So uh, that means the first step would be placing an order for destination signs. And what that would show as, or the document for that, is this here, the destination sign list. Um, so I'll go ahead and throw this up on the screen here so you can see it. Uh, again, GMC Truck and Coach Division. This particular order is from uh, 1968, or something March 19th, 1968. And this is for a T6H4521 uh, being bought new by Kent State University. So this would have been for them Unit 3230. So the first item that the operator would check is if they wanted a double or single curtain for the front destination sign and the side destination sign. Now, old look buses, not all of them came with side destination signs, as in there's this larger window here just to the side of the uh, front door, and that's where it would sit. My particular bus didn't come with one, or Santa Monica didn't have a side destination sign. So I'm not for sure what percentage of the fleets uh, bought had those back with the old looks, but new looks seem to be a lot more common. In my experience, at least, the ones that I've driven or seen always seem to have a side destination sign. And what does single curtain and double curtain mean? So single curtain is just as you see here. It's everything on one sheet, or the front destination sign would have uh, only one curtain that kind of went all the way across. And a double curtain just sounds just like it is, where there's actually two separate um, curtains that the driver would then have to turn. So you know, let's say the uh, right one would say main, and then they could change it from east main to west main without actually changing uh, half of the sign. Or maybe one sign would be a block number or route number, and the other side would be the destination or something like that. So uh, these particular buses had single curtains. Um, Kent State did buy double curtains, which I'll look at here momentarily. Uh, but in my experience, most of them were single curtain. And then they could also say what they wanted the curtain width to be. So again, if you wanted the front destination side to be split, it didn't have to be split in the middle. You could do, you know, that much more of it as the destination. And then the one side, much smaller, would end up being, again, like a block number, root number, something like that. And then down below, they called them exposures, but each individual destination on the... Uh, Bus. Again, here it has a left column and right column. Uh, I think the description here kind of goes into it. For a single curtain, you could, they would just list them all on both sides. Or if you're going to do a split curtain, then the two would be mirrored. You know, the first on this one would be the first one on the other one. But anyway, so for this particular order for Kent State, started with a blank. And then if it doesn't have a color listed next to it, Express Stadium Parking, it's just white lettering on a black um, background. Um, and then if you look on the right side, they did have some color where Campus Loop was orange, Commuter Loop was red, City Loop was red, Allerton, East Main was a blue, and then West Main Plaza was a green. And I haven't been able to see if there's actually, um, could you pick your green? You know, did, let's say, a, you know, a, a transit service, you know, New York City had a particular green. Uh, I'm not seeing that in any of the documentation that I've ever come across. It seems to be that uh, when you bought this, you got the green or you got the orange. Um, so I, I'm not sure there may have been some variety to that or ability to mat color match. But anyway, so uh, you would just tell it, tell the company what they would be. And uh, this is the order side. And the back side of it, again, kind of talks about the size of the, uh, the lettering for each of these destinations. If you were going to do split curtain, uh, how tall it would be or a side, how big it would be. And the one thing that I've noticed, so I did a project where I digitized all of the destination rolls or curtains that I had, that there isn't a standard font. And it was incredibly frustrating. So in this particular case here, we have Charter. You know, it's yay tall and it fits everything in. But then if you kind of roll this. So if you go ahead and roll this to the next destination, and now it's significantly smaller obviously to fit in the whole Kent State University, um, but the letters just aren't shrunk. Um, what I noticed that there was a huge variety in the kerning, which is the space kind of between it, 
as well as they would adjust the width of this stuff. So, you know, in this particular case, the K, or the K here, and you went to another entry that had a K of a similar size, it would be different. Like, there's huge varieties as they accommodated what the company wanted on there. So if it's something didn't fit, they would make a U slightly, you know, narrower, um, or they would, you know, again, change the spacing and all that stuff. So it's kind of an interesting thing that I found. So this particular thing that I'm rolling through here, this is just a side destination sign from a new look bus. Uh, one of the, uh, for Kent State, one of the T6H uh, 4523As that they operated. And here's some of the blues. So they have the East Main, Allerton, uh, Ravenna via Brady Lake, the Student Center. Let's get to a different color here, Ravenna. There we go, there's, there's the yellow. And then here comes the green. Again, these are kind of those standard uh, colors that are listed on this, uh, this document here when they filled that order out. Um, so starting in, and I'm, I'm gonna go from the top of my head, I think it was at some point in the late 50s, a company called Transign uh, went into business. As far as I can tell, they're kind of, they became pretty quickly the, the company that GM used for all of their destination sites. And they're still in existence today, and you can go ahead and, I guess, order your own destination sign. Um, but anyway, so Kent State did buy those, and if you're curious, if you were a transit company and you bought your destination signs, let's say you needed some replacements, it would come in a box like this. And this one, for some reason, says Nap Lamb. I don't know if that was the... Um, some material that they used, but this was the box that it came to Kent State in, and inside of it, and I'll show you there, is a bunch of rolls. Like, they're just these. There you go. So these are just the rolls, and uh, what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll show you a little closer what it says. So on here, if it'll focus, maybe if I get in front of it here, Anyway, it says Kent State University, so the purchase order was 83251. This is a double type, so this is for a bus that did have a split front destination sign, or the double curtain. And then the date that the order was made, so 824 uh, of 71, and then Transign Company, and uh, this was for the driver's side. Again, so if you did a split destination sign, the way they broke it down was Driver's side being, if you're sitting in the driver's seat, would be your side of the bus. And then the curb side, which would have been the, the mirror, the match to this. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, what we'll do is I'll unroll one of these so you can kind of see what they look like. Oh, before I do that, I'll let you know that, and this is kind of where we think to do it. They smell like crayons. So that waxy smell. So I don't know, it must have been something that they have on the paint that's on these, um, that there's kind of a waxiness to it. And it kind of has this waxy smell. So there you go, if you don't know what a destination sign smells like. So let me take you outside and we'll unroll one of these things and we'll take a look at it. Okay, so here's what the destination sign looked like. So again, this is the... Uh, right side or the driver's side of the uh, um, destination sign. So there would have been a matching destination sign who would have said Kent State University or not in service, West Main Plaza. <laughs> but you know, I don't know if you can notice, but at the top it says Ravenna twice. So instead of just having it once, they, did it, they kind of doubled it up. It's kind of interesting, but anyway, so there's just the destination sign that would have been on the front. So on the back of the destination sign, it would list what was on the front side. So the driver could just sit inside and then, uh, you know, turn the crank and load up the destination sign that he needed. So you can see the Ravenna that's on there. Uh, so, anyway, so that's how that would work. Driver could sit inside, so they would have to have a, a similar window. Uh, there'll be two windows on the inside so they can see what each destination sign would show. So let's take a look at the inside of the bus. So if the driver wanted to change the destination sign, over the top of their seat would be this hand crank here, which actually spins relatively easily. 
Um, there is a little bit of, you kind of need to push it in a little bit to kind of get it engaged. I don't know if that was part of a safety feature so it actually didn't bump it or something like that. But you kind of push it in, you can turn it. And then to figure out what destination sign they were going to operate without having to go outside, you can look through this little window here. And inside you can see it. So this particular sign doesn't actually have, as I've shown, where prints on the backside what destination sign you have. You actually need to kind of look through and read it, and then you can turn it to figure out, or to line it up, and I guess you'd have to go outside and take a look at it. So this particular you know, setup with a single curtain, uh, a little more difficult to use. So let's take a look on the outside. So then to change the sign, again, the driver would just look through the little window and turn this, uh, the handle until he got what he needed. So this particular one mount Sinai Hospitals. And I guess we'd probably come outside and take a look just to make sure that it was lined up. And there you go. That's how you change the sign on a uh, old look bus. And then to see what's inside here, turn these two. And then this will kind of come down. There you go. So inside there's two light bars. Uh, this one here on the hinge door and the missing the light bulbs from them and then there's another one if you can kind of see further down the way here and we're kind of behind my light I spin this around here and there's actually it looks like a bulb or two on that one and that's really what light these up you kind of these individual bulbs and uh, i have a collection of moss in there <laughs> need some cleaning but so be it there you go, that's the inside of the old look uh, destination sign. And then the new look bus is fairly similar to what we looked at the old look. Let's take a look inside real quick. So for the driver to manipulate the destination sign on the new look it was actually a lot easier. So it was uh, an electrical switch. You can move it up or down to move the curtain one way or the other. And then there's a window here that you can easily see and in there you can see it tells you what the destination sign is on the outside. So you just have to basically turn it until that matched up. Um, and then for the driver, so for our particular operation, we had quite a few destination signs and I guess it was not uncommon for fleets to change even during the day if you know equipment needed to be moved. But to make it easier for the driver to know where the destination sign was that they needed, this little placard was made. If I can better line this up to see it. So it listed all of the destination signs by number in order and that number would match what was on the destination uh, curtain there. So if you knew that you needed to go to let's say music and speech you knew it was 24 and then you would just turn you know, or, or manipulate this until 24 showed up there. So that made it a lot easier for the uh, driver a quick change. So the same thing was true then for the side destination sign. So the driver would then be able to manipulate it easily with the little hand cranks. It wasn't electrical like the front, but if you needed to know what the destination sign was, we had a similar list here on the left, a little bit of glare there from it, but the only downside is that the numbering system doesn't work as it did before because you don't have a number to reference. So you just have to figure out that you know, West Main was near North Kent, and so you just have to keep turning this to try to find what you needed. So it can be a little bit labor intensive if you needed to switch from, say, South Water to West Main. But usually the way that the destinations were organized on there, that they were kind of close to each other. So if you're front campus and stadium, they're right next to each other there. So to look inside this destination sign, we have these locks on the front. And uh, the difference here is, you'll notice it has this kind of protective lock on it. The destination sign there, it's this whole kind of um, contraption, I don't know if the best to serve, but anyway, it's significant and it's heavy. 
Um, the whole thing is kind of stuck together, this huge metal frame, and it is very heavy. So to, be, uh, to avoid being surprised by that dropping down on you and catching you, this lock was put in here. And if you wanted to undo it, kind of lift up and you can let it fall down even further. So the lighting on here is one, I think it's just one like fluorescent bulb, if my memory serves me correctly. But anyway, so at least it has that. I kind of actually kind of forgot how heavy that was, but there is that safety thing. So there you go. That's the inside of a new look destination sign. So that's really all I have about destination signs. I hope you learned something or maybe found it interesting. I know it was kind of fun for me to get an opportunity to kind of dig around the buses a little bit. But the last thing I actually, before I forget, is the side destination signs don't have uh, their own um, individual light source. Uh, there's no bulbs on the inside of these things. And they just have kind of this side or the back side, again, it's kind of this clear window. And the reason for that is so when the interior lights were turned on that the uh, passenger lights would kind of come through and light it up uh, for the outside. So it's kind of a simple uh, workaround for not having to have any power uh, run to that. So there you go. So that's the last little bit. So that's it. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it somewhat entertaining. Um, until the next time, bye now.